You know what I always tell myself? Man, if only I was born earlier so I could have bought real estate at the bottom during 2011. Or damn it, mom and dad, why couldn't I have been born earlier so I could have been part of the dot com boom? Who knows, maybe I could have been a millionaire today, or maybe even a billionaire. And if you felt the same, then you've come to the right place because today we're going over one of those little known industries that's on the verge of exploding. exploding. So call now for just 12 easy payments of $2,500. Whew, that was, that was pretty cringy. In all seriousness, here's the thing. We all look back at all the opportunities we missed out on and think, why didn't I just jump in when TikTok wasn't the number one social media platform? But hindsight is 2020. What if there were other industries like the real estate boom, like the dot com boom, like the mobile app boom, where millionaires were literally minted overnight that are happening right now, that maybe you could take advantage of to make you millions, where you could be the one on top 10 years in the future instead of sitting at home wishing that you got on the train? That is exactly exactly what this new series is about. The big underground industries happening right now that are just on the very edge of exploding into trillions of dollars. So sit back, relax, and welcome to the Quantum Gold Rush. In 1956, to store just 5 megabytes of data, you needed a hard drive the size of an extra large commercial refrigerator. Today, we can affordably hold over 51,000 times that amount on the tip of our finger. But as engineers and entrepreneurs kept pushing the boundaries of what's possible with computing, we keep getting diminishing returns within the last few years. To put that into perspective, in 1984, the US got its first real consumer mobile phones, the Motorola Dynatac 8000X. It had a price tag of nearly $4,000 or nearly $10,000 in today's money, a weight of two pounds, and a 10 hour charge time for just 30 minutes of talk. Even though those specs are ancient by today's standards, everything about it was a giant leap forward and nothing short of revolutionary. In 2007, we got the revolutionary iPhone where every single aspect of what we knew about a phone evolved and was completely reimagined. What's the effect of that? Pull this cell phone out of your pocket. It has more memory than the, all the memory made for every computer in the world in 1970. And you buy it for one millionth the cost of one computer at that time. And in 2020, we're gonna get an iPhone with the revolutionary feature of having one less port. Yeah, things are starting to slow down. And in the computer world, it's pretty much the same. Sure, computers are getting faster year by year, but we're not seeing the exponential strides we had in previous years and previous decades. This means that the one technology that powers our entire modern day lives that's at the core of every million dollar business, every billion dollar business, every brick and mortar business, education, government, you name it, is at a plateau. Or in other words, humanity is at a bottleneck. And the person or group that can figure out a new way to keep pushing humanity forward? Forget millionaire, forget even billionaire, they'll be one of the most pivotal people in all of human history. Enter quantum computing. Here is the most simple explanation you will find of quantum computing on the internet. To understand what allows quantum computing to potentially break this computational plateau we're at, we have to know a tiny bit about classical computers, also known as the computers at your desk and in your pocket. All classical computers at their core are made up of bits, and each bit can be either 0 or 1. You can think of bits like our number system, but instead of 0 to 9 numbers, it's just 0 to 1. And just like our number system, once we count up to 9, we run out of numbers. So to continue counting, what do we do? We set the next column as 1 and reset the current column as 0, and you get the number 10. When we get to the max of 2 columns or the number 99, we do the same thing. We set the third column as 1, we reset the first two as 0, and the process continues. And for computers, it's exactly the same, but we just have two numbers in each column. We count from 0 to 1, then we run out of numbers, so we add another column or another bit, set that to 1, and reset the current bit as 0, and the process continues. String a bunch of bits together, and you get a bigger number. String 8 bits together, and you can represent a letter. String multiple 8 bits together, and you get words. 
if we string an incomprehensible amount of bits together, you get the ability to compare yourself to others on Instagram and to do other nefarious stuff on these things called computers. But the problem with computers being set up like this is that we're getting to the point where we're getting to the physical limits of how many bits we can squeeze together onto a single computer chip and thus classical computer growth is starting to plateau. So what does this all mean? It's coming to an end. Are we going to have computers in the future? Well, we're certainly investing in research. It is really research. It's things going on in laboratories that physicists are working on to try to invent new computers. This is where quantum computers are supposed to come in. Instead of just bits representing zeros and ones or just two states or two possibilities, thanks to some wizardry in quantum physics that is outside the scope of this video, each bit in a quantum computer or a quid bit can represent either zero or one at the same time. That is literally all that separates classical computers from fancy quantum ones. More possible states equals more possible data that can be processed. The classical bit stores information as a zero or one, and a quantum bit can be both zero and one at the same time. If you have two quantum bits, then there are four possible states that you can put in superposition. With three qubits, it's eight, four qubits, it's 16, but grows exponentially. And with just a small difference alone, it allows quantum computers to scale up exponentially bigger and faster and be able to compete way more information with a fewer number of bits compared to classical computers. We're talking computing something that would take current supercomputers that range in the hundreds of millions of dollars, 10,000 years to compute in something like 3 minutes and 20 seconds. Or in other words, just like the revolution in cars, computers, and the internet brought forth, quantum computers have the potential to change the world as we know it. And with massive change comes massive, massive money. But what does that change look like? Artificial intelligence has been said to be to the 21st century what electricity was to the 20th century. And at its core, AI learns through experience. Facebook's picture tagging facial recognition software is so accurate because Facebook's AI has poured through hundreds of thousands if not millions of pictures to learn how to recognize faces. And it's these constant repetitive calculations that makes AI the perfect candidate for the power of quantum computing. A few real life examples of this include Lockheed Martin planning to use quantum computers to test their autopilot software that's too complex to test on a classical machine. Google is also planning on using quantum computers for even more complex image recognition tasks. Another use case that will be very interesting to see is using quantum computers in the financial markets to predict where prices will go, which is a lot harder to do right now due to the practically infinite amount of possibilities that can happen in the markets. The cryptography that keeps your pictures, passwords, credit card information, and other nefarious stuff that you keep on your computer secure is another industry that's going to be heavily disrupted because quantum computers computers can simply break the current math equations that cryptography uses where classical computers couldn't. It's so bad that the NSA is actively developing quantum resistant cryptographic algorithms that won't be able to be beaten by quantum computers. And these are just some of the early use cases that scientists think quantum computers will be good for. Others include weather forecasting, molecular modeling, particle physics, and the list just goes on and on. But who knows, when phones first came onto the scene, most people imagined it would only ever be used for talking to other people. No one could have ever imagined that one day not too long into the future, phones would be able to surf this thing called the internet, that it would serve as a platform for this mini economy called mobile apps. Did you know you can order a life-size cutout of Danny DeVito? <laughs> And I predict the business of quantum computers will be the same. First, it will only be used at the scientific and big business level. And as the technology progresses, it will slowly trickle down to the consumer. And who knows, maybe one day we'll even have quantum computers in our smartphones. The only problem is we don't know how to make a practical quantum computer yet. Meet Google. As if they couldn't get any more powerful, they've been pushing a ton of money into creating a viable quantum computer. And on October 23rd, they achieved a fancy term called quantum supremacy, basically where they were able to compute a problem that would take 10,000 years to compute on a classical computer and do it in just 3 minutes and 20 seconds. 
Although their competitor IBM claims the same task could have been done in just 2.5 days on a classical supercomputer, scientists say that Google's achievement is the modern day equivalent of the Wright brothers first flight back in 1903. Google and IBM aren't alone though. Microsoft, Amazon, Alibaba, Huawei, and plenty of other startups have joined the party in this modern day gold rush to quantum supremacy. Amazon is partnering with other startups that have their own quantum computer and making it available through the cloud. IBM have their IBM Q initiative, which is a community that's developing quantum software already as we speak. And just like the waves of yesterday, private investors and venture capitalists are starting to pour more and more money into this arena in hopes of getting that first mover's advantage. The gold rush is on, so I want to leave you with one final thought. Apple was able to become the biggest company in the world nearly a trillion dollars with just classical computers. So how high will quantum take us? Thank you so much for being part of the Watch The End Club and be sure to let me know what you think of this new series of like looking into future businesses and industries because I really do read all of your guys' feedback and I base that feedback on what to make next. And if you enjoy the style of hopefully visually pleasing videos for the business entrepreneur side of things, a few pixels below the screen, there's a little button, it's red and it says subscribe. And if you click it, number one, it will really please the YouTube gods which will help me out a ton. And number two, you can get more videos just like this one for free every single week. So you might as well just click that red button down below right now along with the bell icon so you get notified whenever I release a new video. And as always, you can always dislike and unsub whenever you want. So you literally have nothing to lose. That is gonna wrap up this video. You can follow me on Instagram at jaketrend.io. Thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome. I've been Jake. I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, and happy holidays too. Thank you.